you can incline your mind now to simply listening with that joy filled awareness that you've cultivated and this is the topic of tonight is the importance of joy in the Buddha's teaching and I will be reading the Majjhima Nikaya 118 the breath as a reminder anapanasati sutta and this is a wonderful sutta where the Buddha makes it very clear how important joy is joy is not only one of the seven awakening factors but it is also the way to the first uh, level of meditation, the first jhana, to the second jhana, and it continues as the states calm down into a calmer joy, but it is very present the whole way. And a lot of people uh, like uh, to question the smiling and um, saying, oh, but the, the Buddha didn't, didn't teach smiling. Well, <laughs> the amount of time the word joys come back, comes back in the teaching is... Uh, um, quite self-explanatory and uh, the natural expression of joy is smiling <laughs> and it's in fact it's quite hard not to smile when we're joyful so I mean we can really fight it but uh, it's still a very uh, very important part of the practice the Buddha called the meditation a pleasant abiding here and now and so what could that be if not a happy state <laughs> and uh, this this sutta is quite wonderful because it is a uh, very uh, important sutta uh, very important meditation instructions and it's uh, only the setting is quite unique with all these uh, venerable teachers that are teaching younger monks and um, it's quite unique scene in the suttas and it is a very complete explanation of how this practice works how um, how it relates all together the mindfulness what is called mindfulness of the breath sometimes uh, the breath as a reminder to cultivate joyful awareness of letting go and how this all ties together with the four resting places of awareness and the seven factors the seven supports of awakening and release and so these things are not all different they're all together and when we practice this wonderful practice uh, here um, we are practicing all of it <laughs> and so it is quite uh, uh, wholesome in that way and we will get a glimpse uh, also at where, um, for those of you who are familiar with the six R's, where the, the six R's uh, took birth, and this is from this very sutta. And therefore, we're, when we are practicing metta, for example, the way we deal with distraction is based on this very sutta. And so, it is very relevant for any kind of uh, meditation practice to learn how the mind works 
And so, this is at Sawati, at the Eastern Monastery, on Migara's mother's terrace, and that's Visaka, for those who know who Visaka is. Together with many highly realized elder disciples, the, the Awakened One was living there. With the Venerable Sariputta, Maha Moggallana, Maha Kassapa, Maha Kachana, Maha Kotita, Maha Kapina, Maha Chunda, Anuruddha, the Venerable Revata, and the Venerable Ananda, and many others. So this is quite a, a rare scene uh, where all these uh, very advanced teachers were together. At that time, elder monks were guiding and teaching new monks. Some elder monks were guiding and teaching 10 monks, some 20 monks, some 30, some even up to 40 monks. And those new monks were experiencing wonderf wonderful progress. Then on that day of the Uposata, the 15th full moon night of the Pavarana ceremony after the rains this has just passed, for those of you who know a little bit about the rains retreat. The awakened one was sitting in the open, surrounded by the Sangha of monks. The awakened one, while keeping silent, looked around at the Sangha and said, I am glad about this practice, monks. This kind of practice gladdens my mind. Monks deploy even more determination to arrive at the unarrived, to attain the unattained, and to realize the unrealized. I will stay here in Sawati until Komudi in four months. This is the lunar calendar, so these are the lunar months. Having heard this, monks of the country came down to Sawati to visit the Awakened One. Then with even more determination, the elder monks guided and taught the younger monks. And those new monks were experiencing wonderful progress. Then on the full moon night of the Uposata, the 15th Komuda, four months later, the awakened one was sitting in the open, surrounded by the Sangha of monks. And while keeping silent, he looked around and he said, this company is rid of senseless talk. This company is done with senselessness. Cleansed to the pith, it stands. This is found in this company of monks. Such a company is worthy of support, worthy of welcomes, worthy of offerings, and worthy of respects. An unrivaled field of goodness for the universe. This is found in this company of monks. To such a company, even giving next to nothing generates a lot, and giving much generates incalcul incalculably. This is found in this company of monks. Such a company is hard to find in this world. It is not easily encountered. This is found in this company of monks. Such a company is worthy traveling to lay, is worth traveling to lay eyes upon, even if it were to carry one's own provision for many leagues. This is found in this company of monks. In this company there are monks who are arahants, vanquishers of the mental tensions, perfected ones having done what had to be done, having laid down the burden having achieved the true meaning, unleashed from the shackles of becoming, and released by perfect understanding. There are monks who, having undone the five worldly fetters, will reappear instantaneously in the Brahma plane, bound to attain final unbinding there, not subject to coming back to this world. There are monks who, having undone the three fetters, and with the gradual fading of outward desires, 
impatience and confusion will return only once here. Having returned to this world, they will make an end of tension. There are monks who, having undone the three fetters, not subject to falling away, the three fetters are personality belief or belief in a personal self, the belief in rites and rituals bringing liberation and doubt in the Dhamma of the Awakened One, are securely bound for complete awakening. There are monks who meditate here completely dedicated to the development or of the four resting places of awareness. There are monks who meditate completely dedicated to the development of the four excellent undertakings, this is right effort or wise practice, the four psychic potencies, the idipadas, the five faculties, the five powers, the seven supports of awakening, and the eight spoke path of the awakened. The, this is called the bodhipakya dhamma. These are the 37 requisites of awakening. There are monks who meditate completely dedicated to the development of boundless love, boundless compassion, boundless joy, and boundless calm. There are monks who meditate completely dedicated to the development of unattractiveness and constant change. There are monks who meditate completely dedicated to the development of awareness using the breath as a reminder, anapanasati. And here we have a quite wonderful list of pretty well the entire of the Buddha's teaching in terms of meditation and bhavana development, another great aspect of this wonderful sutta. Monks, when developed and cultivated, meditation using the breath as a reminder is highly fruitful and very beneficial. When developed and cultivated, it fulfills the four resting places of awareness, the satipatthanas. When developed and cultivated, the four resting places of awareness fulfill the seven supports of awakening. And when these are developed and cultivated, they fulfill release by understanding. And how is meditation using the breath as a reminder cultivated for it to be highly fruitful and beneficial? Here, monks, someone resorts to the forest at the root of a tree or an empty hut sitting down with legs folded and body upright, having reposed one's awareness about oneself, breathing in with presence, breathing out with presence. First, one is simply aware of a long breath as a long breath, breathing in and breathing out. One is aware of a short breath as a short breath, breathing in and breathing out. This simply means knowing things for what they are, not forcing this. One trains, now this begins the training, to experience the whole body, breathing in and breathing out. Then one trains to calm the tension in the body breathing in and breathing out. One trains to experience joy, breathing in and breathing out. And here we see that it is an actual training and breathing in uh, and experiencing joy. Uh, how do we do this is quite simple. We can just smile and breathe in and out. One trains to experience happiness, breathing in and breathing out. This can also be ease. But these states are coming together, calming down, relaxing. Awareness and joy, they all come together. 
One trains to experience the movements of the mind, breathing in and breathing out. And what are those? Are These are the distractions. And we're simply trained to only be aware of them, not to judge or not to hold on, not to create more tension. One trains to calm the movements of the mind, breathing in and breathing out. These movements, these citta sankaras, they come with a little bit of tension and so we just calm them down and slowly they dwindle and they fall off, fall away. Then one trains to experience the mind and see here we're getting into the level of the mind. He's basically here explaining the jhanas and how to actually practice in a practical way through the jhanas, through the levels of meditation. And now we are going into the arupas, the mental realms, where the mind becomes the resting place of our awareness. The body Awareness of body fades away. One trains to uplift the mind with joy, breathing in and breathing out. See how joy comes back and is so important. Because awareness and joy are bound together. One trains to gather the mind, breathing in and breathing out. This is samadhi. One trains to untangle the mind, breathing in and breathing out. One trains to see constant change. And at this point, awareness becomes very steady. And all these dhammas in the mind, all these states in the mind, we start to see them clearly and they become very subtle. And now we are able to witness how these things are simply going by and going by. And so we train to see constant change breathing in and breathing out. One trains to see calming down or fading away, breathing in and breathing out. And to see the fading away, we need to continually release as soon as we hold on to something it's already gone and so we are already creating tension and to see the fading away or the going by means in itself that we are releasing that we are not holding one trains to see the end of awareness niroda And there is this place where awareness becomes so subtle and clear. It's like a clear window that we've polished for a very long time. It looks like it disappears. And so does awareness when it becomes very, very pure and clear. And this is talking about Niroda. Here it's Niroda Nupasi the actual Pali. And this is a training. We train to see this, the end of awareness. One trains to see breaking free, breathing in and breathing out. And this is the end of the training, how to enter into Nibbana directly. This is how to cultivate meditation using the breath as a reminder for it to be highly fruitful and very beneficial. How is meditation using the breath as a reminder cultivated and developed so that it fulfills the four resting places of awareness? Now this wonderful sequence is also uh, like a toolbox. We have to remember these are all things that the Buddha said in in very practical ways uh, throughout our meditation 
uh, that we can do, we can use. So it is a toolbox for us in our meditation to whenever a certain experience arises, then we can use these tools and we can through the fluctuating change of this experience of meditation use and apply what is needed naturally at that time and we become very skilled at it and this sequence is divided into four four steps and these four steps here the buddha uses them as uh, the four resting places of awareness and so he says at the time when one is aware of a long breath as a long breath one is aware of a short breath as a short breath one trains to experience the whole body and one trains to calm the tension in the body at that time one is resting one's awareness upon body knowing it as only body intent fully conscious and present letting go of tension and distractions i say this is just another bodily experience bound up with the body that is breathing in and breathing out see how the buddha's teaching is so simple and so very effective and wonderful really not complicated Then at the time when one trains to experience joy, one trains to experience happiness, to experience the movements of the mind, the citta sankharas, and the move and to calm the movements of the mind is pasambayam citta sankaran. Pasambayam comes from pasambati, and this is sambati is an active verb of relaxing, letting go. And it is with the, men, the bodily sankharas, the bodily tensions that we've seen earlier. And it is here also with the mental tension and the mental movements. And pa is like pro in English. Pa is accentuating this relaxation so proactively <laughs> relaxing <laughs> at that time one is resting one's awareness upon sensations knowing them as only sensations simple intent fully conscious and present of sensations Letting go of tension and distractions, I say this is just another kind of felt experience bound up amongst all that is felt, that is, wise attention, breathing in and breathing out. Whatever the attention is resting on, there is feeling, there is sensation there. And whatever that sensation is, whether it's pleasant or unpleasant or neutral, we simply know it for what it is without judging or criticizing or making a story behind it. We just let go, relax, smile, and we just rest the mind onto these. At the time when one trains to experience the mind, to uplift the mind with joy, to gather the mind, to untangle the mind, at that time one is resting one's awareness upon mind, simply knowing it as mind, simple. Intent, fully conscious and present, letting go of tension and distractions, I say there is no awareness with the breath for one who forgets to be present and fully conscious. And this quality of being present and fully conscious here is the mind, that is the mental realm. And that is what we are developing at that point. And this is part of the Arupa Jhanas. 
um, not strictly and only, but mostly. <laughs> At the time when one trains to see constant change, to see calming down, to see the end of awareness and to see breaking free or liberation, this Pali is Patini Saga Nupasi breaking free. At that time one is resting one's awareness upon mental states, knowing them as only mental states. Intent, fully conscious and present, letting go of tension and distractions. Seeing with discernment, tension and distractions are abandoned and one wisely attends with steadiness. See how here this really sounds like the last uh, levels of meditation, the fourth jhana and beyond. Interesting. Developed and cultivated in this way, monks, meditation using the breath as a reminder fulfills the four resting places of awareness. And so this is how to practice in a very tangible way these four resting places of awareness. How it works and how the mind is simply letting go with joy into this awareness of our own experience, whether it's body, felt experience, anything that is felt, the mind or the contents or the mental states. Seeing it for what it is, yata bhutan. How are the four resting places of awareness cultivated and developed so that they fulfill the seven supports of awakening? Here, when one meditates, resting one's awareness on the body, knowing it as only body, intent, fully conscious and present, letting go of tension and distractions. One is not carried away by distractions, and there comes to be awareness. Awareness takes root, it grows. When one is not carried away and there comes to be awareness, at that time, the support of awakening of awareness becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. Then meditating with this awareness, one seeks wholesome states and discards unwholesome ones and completely understands one's mental states that arise using discernment, the wholesome and the unwholesome. Whenever one is meditating with awareness in such a way, seeking wholesome states, discarding unwholesome ones, and completely understanding one's mental states as they arise, at that time, the support of awakening of discernment becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. And see, the first is awareness, that is wise awareness of the Eightfold Path. And this here was the f uh, wise understanding or discernment of the path. And the next one is the right practice, wise effort, the action verb of the path. Whenever there is seeking for wholesome states, discarding unwholesome ones, and complete understanding of one's mental states as they arise, continually and enthusiastically, at that time, the support of awakening of inspiration becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. Motivation would be another good word for this one. And this is the wise effort, wise practice. 
with this inspired practice, spiritual joy arises. And here this is the word niramisa. And so when you, uh, uh, when you see uh, the word unworldly rapture when people talk about absorption concentrations this unworldly rapture that is supposed to be quite something <laughs> taking the whole body and um, well it is simply because this word niramisa means non fleshy non carnal and non not associated with this world and what that means is that this is not the joy of um, eating a chocolate bar for example this is the joy of mental development and inspired practice and this is why it is called and here i translate it as spiritual joy this is not uh, this is completely accessible when you are smiling and relaxing and continually practicing this it becomes manifest and it arises and it, it, it grows even better and stronger whenever spiritual joy arises because of inspired practice at that time the support of awakening of joy becomes manifest it is being developed and it gradually matures by development. See how wonderful he is, ex how he is explaining wonderfully each step of the seven supports of awakening and how they work and how joy arises from being aware and using that awareness to discern states and to sort them out. And through that, we are uh, through enthusiasm and inspired practice this there's a lot of joy arising from that because when we let go of tension and distractions the mind becomes very happy it is the natural state of a clear mind to be happy so this spiritual joy just arises and this is how the mind becomes collected with this calmness, oh, with this spiritual joy, the body calms down and the mind calms down. Whenever the body calms down and the mind calms down because of spiritual joy. Now this is the culmination of all the practice that we've done with the joy that uh, culminates in that calmness. At that time, the support of awakening of calm becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. And here, this is Pasadi again. And this is the same uh, root as what we were practicing earlier uh, when he was explaining the step-by-step -step practice. With this calmness, of body the happy mind becomes unified whenever the happy mind becomes unified by way of bodily calm at that time the support of awakening of mental collectedness becomes manifest it is being developed and it gradually matures by development With this calm, collected mind, one steadily attends with discernment. And this is just the nature of this joyful, collected and calm mind is simply being steadily aware. And see the, four, the first three and four elements, the supports, we're more active and here we go into more of a passive state where by practicing the first three the last four simply arise uh, 
in the natural way. So that's quite one wonderful to know as well. Whenever one steadily attends with discernment by way of calm collectedness of mind, at that time the support of awakening of mental steadiness becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. So this is directly how we practice the seven supports of awakening and how we uh, do practice this bhavana, this cultivation of mind in a very practical sense. And now he goes through sensations as sensation in the same way. When one meditates, resting one's awareness on sensations, knowing them as only sensations, intentfully conscious and present, letting go of tension and distractions. One is not carried away by distractions and there comes to be awareness. And there this whole chain is explained again, but I'm not going to explain it again right now. And we will go, we will fly through the mind as mind, resting awareness upon mind, knowing it as simply mind, and resting awareness on mental states, knowing them as only mental states, intent, fully conscious and present, letting go of tension and distraction. One is not carried away by distractions and there comes to be awareness. And with this awareness, we sort out, we discern the states, we choose the wholesome one that are rid of tension, that are full of joy and awareness, and we let go of the tension. And doing this continually uh, with motivation and inspired practice, we have this wonderful joy arise, and through this joy there is that calm, state that is developed and the collectedness and the steadiness and here how the seven supports how are the seven supports of awakening developed and cultivated to fulfill release by understanding Here one develops the awakening support of awareness which comes from letting go, calming down, release and that culminates in complete surrender. One develops the awakening factor of discernment which comes from letting go, calming down, releasing and that culminates in complete surrender. One develops the awakening support of insp inspiration which comes from letting go, calming down, releasing and that culminates in complete surrender. And here complete surrender is Vosaga Parinami and Vosaga in fact means relaxation. <laughs> that gives you a good idea. One develops the awakening support of joy which comes from letting go, calming down, release and that culminates in complete surrender. One cultivates the awakening support of calm which comes from letting go, calming down, release and that culminates in complete surrender. One develops the, the awakening support of mental collectedness which comes from letting go, calming down, release, and that culminates in complete surrender. One develops the awakening support of steadiness of mind, which comes from letting go, calming down, release, and that culminates in complete surrender. This is how to develop and cultivate the seven supports of awakening so that they fulfill release by understanding. This is what the Awakened One said, glad at heart the monks rejoiced in, in his words. And so we um, 
end here on this wonderful sequence where um, the Buddha um, uses the, these uh, four characteristics quite, quite a lot, uh, letting go, calming down, release, and that culminates in complete surrender. Uh, which in Pali is viveka nisitang viraga nisitang nirodang nisitang vosaga parinami and he explains also the Eightfold Path in that way he explains each factors of the Eightfold Path and that they should be uh, nisitang is rooted rooted upon these four things and that gives us this wonderful final direction where we understand also that uh, the seven supports of awakening stand on these four things and that is our direction in the end because they can be uh, we can develop all kinds of joy but the joy the spiritual joy that comes from letting go calming down release uh, is particular and so by mentioning these the Buddha is simply making sure that we are staying on the right path <laughs> that we are not uh, going too far away from the right practice and so that's all I have to say for tonight I'll stop now <laughs> do you have any questions yes Dante you said at the start that you would make a link to the six R's and I think I've heard them in what you've said, um, but maybe you want to elaborate there. The six R's, yes. You said that you would make a link from this sutta, that this is where, it's, where it comes from. Well, I simply said that's where it's coming from, yes. Uh... I could, I could explain a little bit more, but uh, this is how... Uh, this is how they were discovered and uh, they were put into this uh, sequence uh, because of, of uh, Dhyana Panasati Sutta and basically uh, how to, well the six R's are to recognize, uh, to release, to relax, to re-smile, to return to the object of meditation, whatever, whichever one it is. Usually it's metta or one of the Brahma Viharas, compassion, joy, or uh, calm. And to uh, repeat. So recognize, release, relax, re-smile, return, repeat. These are the six R's. Um, basically, uh, the origin, well, the, the most tangible proof that we have that the Buddha taught uh, to relax uh, the, this tension, to relax uh, tension in the mind and in the body is in that sutta where the Buddha said, Pasam uh, Bhayang Kaya Sankarang and pasambhayang citta sankara. So the sankaras of the mind, the sankaras in the body, and this is being interpreted in a lot of ways, but uh, sankaras is simply uh, just things that arise, uh, processes within the body and within the mind, and what are the bodily processes? Well, anything that is tension, anything that arises in the mind also, or any movement. But movement comes with friction. Friction comes with tension. 
And so, um, the six R's originate from there, there but um, the, this is also a, a complete path of practice that is available to us and that is quite, quite pristine in itself. And uh, we can also simply practice in this way. The loving kindness, the Brahma Viharas, the boundless love, boundless uh, compassion, boundless joy, boundless calm, they are truly wonderful. They are uh, like a boost, like the highway to Nibbana. <laughs> Especially at the beginning. So it's very, very, very good to develop them. And that's why the Buddha usually would teach the Brahma Viharas first and then explain my uh, awareness of the breath uh, with the breath because also uh, sometimes people will will want to will not want to practice the other methods if they start with that one because um, it is uh, very much about we talked about it in this very sutta uh, how it is dealing with uh, it is literally practicing the four resting places of awareness the satipatthanas and what these satipatthanas are is simply that these these four resting places they they are there all the time and so there is no intention whatsoever or force required or um, energy uh, being put uh, to, to generate these states like the loving kindness has to be has to come with a little bit of effort because we have to generate that loving kindness. It is a conditioned state. Uh, and same for the rest of the Brahma Viharas, even though they become much more subtle. But these four Satipatthanas, the whole of their beauty, in fact, is that they are completely effortless. They come completely naturally. And it's, in fact, by letting go of everything that we are completely aware of them. Sati Sampajanya, full awareness and, my, and awareness of them. So, when we start practicing in this way, the mind really, because the mind really enjoys uh, this very deep calm <laughs> and so uh, people are not really likely to want to start uh, generating metta but here we saw in this very sutta and that is another reason why i read this one tonight and it explains many many of the um, the, the sections of his teaching. Uh, for example, the Bodhipakya Dhamma, the 37 requisites of awakening. And um, these, are, these are all uh, things, tools for us that we can develop that will help us to be more um, all around meditators, I could say, or all around better people. <laughs> and so the metta, when we practice the Brahma Viharas first, well, the mind becomes very, very wholesome, very quickly. And it becomes a second nature, a second nature to respond with love, with compassion, with sympathetic joy or calm. And this will help us, for example, in many situations. 
and this will support for example uh, awareness uh, our practice of using the breath as a reminder anapanasati and so this is all strengthening and supporting itself up in fact the word dhamma comes from the root dha which means that which supports and so that's what we're practicing this there is a wonderful sutta where the buddha says that the, the eightfold path is like because the monks have these stands for their bowls and because we there's a there's a rule we can't put our bowls on the, on the ground <laughs> has to be on a stand and so the buddha says this and monks the stand of the mind is this aryan eightfold path <laughs> And so we can say that basically for, for all of these practices, they are the stand for the mind to, because otherwise the mind it just flows and it just goes wherever it wants. But this is the, we prop it up, <laughs> supporting it. That was a long answer to your short question. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Pante. It's my pleasure. Good. Anybody else? I have a question, Pante. Yes, go ahead. Um, I don't know if you can hear my connection isn't very good, but yes. Um. So um, there's this division between the resting place of awareness as the mind and the arupa jhanas and the resting place of awareness of bod as body in the rupa jhanas. Um, it's not always so clear cut, and can one be in the first four jhanas, but just be resting with mind yes and on the yes sorry go ahead oh that was just a yes <laughs> <laughs> okay yes it can and be just mind a follow-up question mm -hmm. um there there are some people who disregard the Arupa Jhanas um, uh, they say that um, that the Buddha when he was a Bodhisattva he he um, practiced with these and rejected them and on the eve of his enlightenment, he he uh, went through just. I mean, that hasn't been my experience. But what what would you say <laughs> to that? Yes. Uh, well, I would say this is simply lacking of direct experience. <laughs> But uh, uh, maybe um, maybe I mean the the Buddha the Buddha explains these arupajanas uh, so many times. <laughs> um, it would be uh, basically putting. A lot of what he said in the garbage so I'm, I'm not sure about that uh, but he also explained his teaching in many different ways and you know sometimes he's not he's not even talking about these jhanas so but yes the, the the problem now nowadays is that there is many many different interpretations of this teaching and um, 
different practices and so I'm, I'm not sure you know, you know there's I've heard and seen and tried so many of them also I'm not sure which one this this is from but uh, I I I would simply just stay with the suttas and what what is already being said by the Buddha himself and the suttas and uh, the direct experience uh, of of you and uh, other meditators, and so uh, technically the 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 arupa jhanas technically are part of the fourth jhana. So maybe that's related, but I don't know. Okay. I hope it uh, kind of answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It did. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, it's a it's tricky because um, the this the, these these things are quite quite uh, quite obviously experienceable. So uh, that someone would say something like that would just mean that whatever they're doing, whatever their practice is, they're not experiencing these states, which would make me lean towards the uh, interpreting this as there there's something uh, not working with the way they're practicing or yes there's something um, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a piece missing or somewhere or a few but uh, mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. Um, and this this simply this simply is dhamma in in a very very tangible way. There's uh, it's simply the jhanas because it's mainly these states have been interpreted in in an absorption concentration context for so long that it's hard for the people to understand what these states truly are but the jhanas they are simply a roadmap they are simply you know you you practice these three states you practice well for example you have the virtue this supports this that's the ground for the wholesome states this is the root of wholesome states so you purify the virtue first and the mind has a healthy stand and then and then there's three things it's very simple there's there's the wise practice that you abandon you let go you release you relax the tension state and you cultivate you bring up the wholesome states joy metta all these things and then by practicing wise practice right effort wise awareness arises then you're aware of the satipatthanas these are the satipatthanas but it's just being aware of things as they are without changing them without forcing without without controlling and that's very important through releasing letting go and then then in that fold of the path that that samadhi part that, that wise samadhi these are the jhanas so basically when you do the wise practice, when you practice properly, then w the right kind of awareness will arise and that is not forcing the mind to be aware of something. It is this liberated awareness, this fully open, blooming, sampajanga.